Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to focus on variables and data types. Now, I already showed you how to set up a project on Windows and Mac, and now what I'm going to do is just come in here and create a new Python file. So I just right-click on that folder and go New Python File. And I'm going to call this Python Tut 1, and that's good, and click on Enter. And here we go. And the first thing to know whenever you're creating Python programs is that the extension is going to end with PY. And then you have to understand that every programming language must have the ability to accept, store, and name data. So basically, you have to be able to receive data from the keyboard or from other parts of your program and assign a name to that data. And this data is either a single value or multiple values that are assigned a name. And that data is going to be assigned a name that contains data that is called a variable. Now Python has many different ways to store lists of the data, but I'll cover that in a later tutorial. Now it is convenient to assign names to data. And if I wanted, for example, to store my age in Python, I would just type my age is equal to 43. And if I wanted to store my name, I would just type my name is equal to Derek. And there we go. Now there are certain rules for naming variables in Python. Your variables can start with a letter or an underscore. And then after the first letter, you can use numbers such as num underscore one. But one thing you cannot do is you cannot put spaces in variable names. So for example, you could put my underscore age, but you could not put my space age. And it is also considered good practice to separate words with underscores, as you see right here, and not using camel case like you see right here. One thing that you need to know is these are a list of keywords that you are not allowed to use as variable names. But don't go and try to memorize these words. As you learn Python, you'll learn what all of these words mean. And also, if you would somehow accidentally use them as a variable name, Python will warn you, and then you can just change it to a different name. Now what I want to do is just do a simple print statement. This is going to allow us to print to the screen. So you could say something like, hello, and then use your variable name, my name, exactly like that, to output to the screen. You could then come up here and click on run, and then run like this, and then hit enter. And you're going to see that hello Derek shows up down here. Now if we want to move this to the right side of the screen, just right click on it go move to and then you're gonna say right bottom and then it's over here now basically hello right here is what we call a string and what happens here is the print function is gonna print out to your screen the values between these parentheses right here and it's very important to have an opening and closing parentheses and if you wish to output multiple values as we have done right here then just separate them with commas, as I did right there. Now it's important to know that data is stored in essentially boxes in your computer's memory. And the size of the box you assign is referred to as a data type. So if you want to store values with decimal places, you store that data in a float data type. And if you want to store a series of characters or numbers, etc., you would store those in string data types. One thing that's important is to comment your code, and if you want to do that, just use the hash symbol or number symbol, and everything you type afterwards will be ignored. Likewise, if you would like to use multi-line comments, you would just put in three quotes like that, and then you could create a multi-line comment exactly like that. Now, a string data type is going to either start with a double quote like this, or single quotes like that or three quotes like that and you're going to basically be able to put anything inside of a string letters numbers spaces any type of character and in a situation in which you wish to create a string let's just say str1 and you find the need that you have to use double quotes inside of there you're going to backslash those double quotes so you could put 
this is a quote like that and then another backslash like that and that is a legitimate way for you to use double quotes inside of your strings. Now this backslash with the quote after it is known as an escape sequence and there are multiple different escape sequences. Let's comment this out so that we won't get these errors. So you can also have new lines which you're going to see later. You're going to be able to use a backslash if you backslash it. You can do the same with single quotes and this is a backspace and this is a tab. And anytime that I'm moving too quickly feel free to hit the pause button so that you can write this information down but it's also found below the video on the same page. Now there are three main number types inside of Python. You have integers, floats, and complex numbers. And I'll cover complex numbers here briefly in a second. And basically integers are just going to be values that don't have decimal places. So something like a 3 or an 8 or a 100,000, those are all going to be integer types. Floats contain decimal values. So if you'd have pi, for example, that is a float. Now there is no maximum value for an integer as long as you have enough memory. You can, however, get a practical maximum number for an integer, however. You're going to have to first, however, import a module and that module is going to be called sys and all that a module does is provides pre-written code that you can use in your program to save yourself some time. So back to getting a practical maximum size for integers. To do so you would say print and then you would type sys and then max size. And if we run that you're going to see this gigantic number that shows up right there. Now floats on the other hand are going to have a maximum size and to find that out you just go print and sys and then float underscore info max and there you can see that number right there. One thing that's important to know however whenever you're working with floats and this isn't a Python specific thing this is true for all programming languages whenever you create a variable a specific amount of space is set aside so if you create a value larger than that space allows errors can creep in so I'll give you an example here we'll have a float and then we'll throw a whole bunch of values in here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so this is a very big float and let's create another one now if you would go and create an additional float and you want to add these two values together you just use the add symbol like that but you may be surprised that whenever you go print and F3 and run that that you're actually going to see an error here. Basically you can trust that your floats are going to be accurate to 15 digits and no more than that and in a little bit later I'm going to introduce data types with more accuracy if you need that. And just to be a completionist, I'm also going to show you a complex number. So here we have a complex number and we will just go 5 plus 6j. And I'll cover those in a little bit later as well. An additional data type that you have available to you are, is the Boolean data type. And it can either have a value of true or a value of false. And as the tutorial continues, you will see how extremely important they are. And to create one, you would just do something like can vote is equal to true. And there you go. Now you have a Boolean. Now it's very important to understand that Python is dynamically typed. And what that means is that a variable's data type is determined by the value you assign to it. And this is different than many other programming languages. Basically, a variable's value can also be changed, which is also different. So I could do something like my age is equal to 43, and then turn around and say my age is equal to dog. Okay, this makes sense, that doesn't. But guess what? You're able to still do that inside of Python without any errors. Another thing that's important is to be able to cast to different types. And all that means is you are converting from one data type into another. And if you'd like to know how to cast, I'm going to go print and I'll say cast. 
And then what I'm going to use here is a function, which is just pre-written code to find out what data type I am working with. And in this situation, I am going to go and cast a float with the value of 5.4 into an integer. And then this function is going to tell me what that data type is after the cast. This is a float converted into an integer. And you can see right there that it says it is an integer. So let's go and cast two different other data types. So we'll go cast two. And in this situation, I'll keep this as 5.4. But in this situation, I want to turn it into a string. And we'll do another one. And in this situation, I am going to convert a Unicode character into a string. So I'll say chr like that and then throw 97 inside of there you'll see what that looks like well, actually let's see it right now and there you can see it is a string there are no character types inside of python do another cast in this situation i'm going to convert a character to unicode and how you do that is just go ord and we'll throw a a inside of there and then finally, I'm going to convert an integer into a float. So we'll go 5, and then I will throw an integer inside of here, which is 2, but I will convert it into a floating data type. And we can run it, and you can see how all of those casting from one data type to another works. And basically, whenever I say Unicode, what I'm referring to is that every single character on your keyboard has a standardized number associated with it and that is just a unique way that we are able to refer to different data types using numbers and so forth. I'll cover that also later on but basically that's all you need to know about Unicode at this time. Also important to understand that variable names are case sensitive so exam for example if you have age which is assigned to 2 and uppercase age which is assigned to 3 those are completely different variables. Also, make sure you are casting to the correct data type anytime you're working with variables. And also make sure that you surround your calculations with parentheses anytime in which you want to produce a single value. For example, I can go num1 is equal to, and that is a string, and num2 is equal to, and here, I will throw a 2 in there, also a string. Now if I want to print this out, I could say something like 1 plus 2 is equal to, and then follow that up, and here I'm going to be casting. So I'm going to say that I want to convert num1 into an integer, and then you have to be very careful with your parentheses and where they begin and where they end, otherwise you'll get errors. Then I'm going to cast num2 also to an integer. And let's stretch this out. There you can see everything on one line. And if you want to make sure that your parentheses are used properly, just count from here. So there's one and two and three. And then you have a closing bracket, one. So this is now going to go down to the value of two. And then back up to three, which means you need three closing parentheses. But thankfully, PyCharm will help you out with that and signal if you have any errors inside of your code. And now, if we run that, you're going to see that we get the values that we expected. Okay, so there is a quick rundown of variables and naming, as well as data types. Of course, much more will be done with all of these different data types and variables in general. And in the next video, we'll learn about accepting user input and performing math calculations. Now that you have this all finished, underneath the video you'll find a quick little quiz that you can take to reinforce what you've learned. Always feel free to leave any questions and comments below.